Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday morning to you, and let me do this. <laughs> Oops. Uh, I think you could hear me. All right. Uh, I did that the other day, and didn't seem to be any audio problems. Okay, let me say again, happy Wednesday to you, and welcome back. Pardon me, to Morning Musings. I do appreciate you being with me. Here we are. Uh, we are video number 15 and video number in our study of the feast days and video number 14 in our study of the Sabbath and the Sabbath plural. Uh, this, this, I mean, it's absolutely fascinating study. I hope you'll agree. And based upon the number of comments that we're getting about this, uh, that certainly is true. I pointed out yesterday that the, both the New Testament and the ancient rabbis viewed all of Israel's events as typological. God called the feast days convocations, which means rehearsals. Paul said that the events of Israel's past were types of the first century events, meaning that the goal of those types and shadows had been achieved or was being achieved in the first century. Now that means, ladies and gentlemen, as I have challenged, I gave a challenge on Monday, all right? If you can delineate from scripture, now please, you know, don't say, well, God, God called the Sabbath day his Sabbath. Well, he called all of his Sabbaths, my Sabbaths, plural. Ezekiel chapter 20. He said, Israel, and by the way, he called a man, Anthropos. So it's an illegitimate argument to argue that God gave man, plural, generically, the Sabbath, okay, because Israel was referred to as man. So anyway, in Ezekiel chapter 20, at least three times God said of Israel, Judah specifically, they violated, they broke my Sabbaths, plural. Now, we know that Israel did not just violate the seventh day Sabbath. We know that they violated, that they failed to observe the Jubilee, according to 2 Chronicles. So it's an invalid argument to say, well, the reason that God took Judah into captivity was because she violated the seventh day and uh, kept the other feasts faithfully. Seriously? I don't think anybody wants to honestly make that kind of argument. Because number one, there's no proof of it whatsoever. God said, you violated my Sabbath, Sab Sabbatah. Plural, inclusive, no distinction. And so once again, and this is so critically important, when Paul and the New Testament writers say they were living in the appointed time, the Kairos, and they said that all of the types and the shadows of Israel's history pointed to the first century generation, then that means, ladies and gentlemen, that the types and that whatever it was that the types and the shadows and the rehearsals of the previous ages, previous time, that goal was the first century. That means that what all of the Sabbath days foreshadowed was to arrive in the first century. That includes the seventh day Sabbath. And yet, once again, we are told, well, there's a distinction and delineation between the Sabbaths of Moses. They're never called the Sabbaths of Moses, so far as I'm aware. All of the feast days, as I have pointed out repeatedly in Leviticus chapter 23, are called the feasts of the Lord. Leviticus 23, verse 2. And all of them are 
Sabbaths of the Lord. I'm really quite stunned, and I mean no disrespect whatsoever. I understand the desperation that sets in when your paradigm is being challenged. But I'm still somewhat amazed at some of the claims about the so-called distinctions when no book, chapter, and verse is even offered. It's just like, well, look at the terminology here and look at the terminology over here. And that's an atomistic kind of hermeneutic that says, oh, well, if it's this over here, then it cannot be that over here as well. Who said? We're going to say to Yahweh, if you use this terminology over here, then it cannot apply to the same things over here. It's false logic. So, one poster, won't call his name, he's been very respectful, has made the following claim. Quote, the ceremonial Sabbath foreshadowed a coming new creation. And I say to that, amen and amen. To continue, quote, they had been added as a consequence of sin. But the Sabbath of the Ten Commandment law had been hallowed before sin was introduced and it was later incorporated into the great moral law written by the finger of God. That statement is full of error. Furthermore, this same poster then made the, uh, made the claim that the seventh day Sabbath foreshadowed the final salvation. Amen and amen. Now, this same poster has attempted, and others, again, I'm not trying to pick on any one person, other posters like him have sought to delineate between the seventh-day Sabbath and the rest of the Sabbaths. But notice what this individual has done. They've said, well, the ceremonial Sabbaths foreshadowed Sabbaths foreshadowed a coming new creation. Absolutely true. And then turned around and also said, the seventh day Sabbath foreshadows our final salvation. Well, isn't our final salvation the new creation? Where's that delineation? The new creation is the final salvation. So this person has once again entrap themselves. There is no distinction. And by the way, you'll notice in the quote, no effort whatsoever was given to give scriptural proof for the claim. And in, and in ensuing correspondence, when I have challenged, give me the book, the chapter, and the verse that says the ceremonial Sabbath foreshadowed the coming new creation they had been added because of, of, of sin. I'll get to that more on that in a moment. But show me the proof where the Ten Commandments pointed to some other reality other than the final new creation. Where's the proof? Where's the book, the chapter, and the verse? It's not there. And to make the point, in no rabbinic literature that I am aware of at all, and I'm not the world's greatest rabbinic scholar, I, I love to read what they had to say. It's sometimes shocking what they had to say, for instance, in the Talmuds, some of the most ungodly writings you'll ever see in your life. But nonetheless, you know, you, you can glean nuggets about what the rabbis believed and you just have to throw out the horrible bones, all right? I'm not aware of any rabbinic writings in which any teacher of Israel, now if some of you have, have it, share it with me, and I'll consider it. Of course, even if they did, it doesn't mean the Bible did, right? Because you believe you me, the rabbis, 
didn't always hold biblical truths. Not even close. So what I'm asking for, what I've challenged posters such as this one, is show me where the Bible delineates between what the seventh day Sabbath pointed to versus the so-called ceremonial Sabbath. Because let me make the point again, if you're going to admit that the seventh day Sabbath foreshadows the final salvation, resurrection rest, and if you're going to then say the ceremonial Sabbath foreshadowed the coming new creation, then you're saying that all of the Sabbaths foreshadowed the same identical thing. And the argument is lost. The attempt at delineation is lost. And then this individual con uh, continues by saying that the ceremonial Sabbaths were added as a result or consequence of sin. Where does the Bible say that? I, I suggest to you as kindly and respectfully as possible, that is eisegesis of the worst sort. Eisegesis means to read something into to add something to the text, that is not there. And let, rem let me remind you that yesterday I pointed out that when appeal is made to Colossians chapter 2, saying, well, the ceremonial feast days, they were handwriting of ordinances that was against us and contrary to us, that's an abuse of the text. Nowhere, nowhere are the feast days, any of them, said to be contrary to Israel. You know what Paul does say? In Romans chapter 7, he says that the law, thou shalt not covenant, uh, covet, brought death to him. I was alive once without the law, the commandment, what commandment? Thou shalt not covet. The the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. And what did he go ahead to say? Is the law then against the promises of God? Well, no, not really. But, but, and this is critical, I find then that that which was intended for life instead brought death. You want to talk about something that was contrary? Now, that's not, it's not what, Colossians is talking about is I'll further delineate as we continue. But if you want to make the argument that any part of the old law was contrary to Israel, then Paul defines it in Romans chapter 7. I was alive, commandment came, sin revived, I died. That which was intended for good, that which was intended for life, brought death. It did not deliver from sin, could not deliver from sin, because it was weak through the flesh. So what I'm challenging those who have posted such things as this so when it is said, they, that the quote, so-called ceremonial laws, and let's not forget seventh day Sabbath was a ceremonial law, were added as a, added as, added <laughs> as a consequence of sin, show me the text. Show me where in Exodus 19 and 20, and 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, etc., Show me where God ever said, okay, now the look, the Decalogue is great, it's good, it's spiritual, et cetera, et cetera, but you guys blew it. So now I'm going to give you a bunch of other laws that are contrary to you, that are going to do nothing but condemn you. What did Decalogue do? It killed them. You see the problem with delineation or the attempt to delineate between the seventh day and the other feast days. So we absolutely have to consider, where's the proof? 
show me the proof of where the Sabbath foreshadowed this, the other Sabbaths foreshadowed that. Because in this quote, and again, I say this kindly, I say this with respect, I say this with appreciation for those who have studied so hard, okay? I really do. I have always appreciated those uh, of the Sabbatarian persuasion, no, how much, no matter how much I've disagreed with them. The amount of time spent to justify that position is admirable. It doesn't make it right. I want the proof for the delineation in which Seventh-day Sabbath was for good. The other feast days were contrary to, to Israel and against them. Show me the verses and show me where Seventh-day Sabbath pointed to final rest, but the ceremonial Sabbath didn't really point to Sabbath or the final salvation, even though they pointed to the new creation. Folks, look, final time, when you say that the ceremonial feast days pointed to toward the new creation, you are saying, you are saying, it's undeniable, you are saying the ceremonial feast days pointed to final salvation. And therefore, all attempts at delineation between Seventh-day Sabbath, ceremonial Sabbaths, goes up in flames. I'm out of time. Thank you so much for joining me for today's morning musings. Be sure to join me on Friday as I continue the review and discussion of the book, The Future of Rome. All right? And uh, then, of course, on Friday evening, Lord willing, nothing interfering, uh, Mike Sullivan and I will continue our review of the recent debate between Michael Brown and Steve Gregg as they argued about the fate of Israel, et cetera, et cetera. And Mike and I will dig deeper into our study of the Song of Moses. Boy, this is good stuff. So I'll see you on Friday.